Welcome back to 5 a.m. Theology. We kind of had a zoom through the book of Genesis because we're trying to keep up with our chronological reading. And there's 50 chapters in Genesis and we've hit two little passages. So we thought it would be important because now we're in the book of Exodus to start with Exodus chapter one to kind of get us up to speed to what's going on. Because Exodus one does give us a little bit kind of a little bit of summary of what's happened in Genesis. So chronologically, Job comes after Genesis. Now, if you're looking in your regular Bible, you're not going to see that Exodus comes after Genesis, but in the chronological Bible, Job comes next. That's why we did Job last week. The book of Genesis ends with the death of Joseph. Exodus opens with a really quick recap of Joseph's 11 brothers who went to Egypt And Exodus 1, 6 tells us that Joseph died and all his brothers and all that generation died. And then it gets to Exodus 1, 7, which says, but the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong so that the land was filled with them. And then Chris, of course, there's 1, 8 says, now there arose a new king over Egypt who didn't know Joseph. So you have any thoughts on, on those verses? Well, I noted in my Bible, the Israelites became exceedingly numerous and, or something like that became numerous or multiplied is mentioned in just in chapter one of Exodus. It's mentioned five or six times. They were becoming exceedingly numerous and it just keeps saying it and saying it and saying it. So, and they were oppressed. And the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and flourished. (laughs) And boy, do we see that a lot of times as far as Christianity spreading is what this is what came to my mind. Christianity spreads a lot of times during persecution. Absolutely. The gospel message, Christianity, I think you're right. And I think it's important to remember that between verses one, six and one, eight, Roughly 300 years have passed. Now, we don't know exactly the time that the new Pharaoh took over and they put the Israelites in slavery, but Moses hadn't been born yet. So we know it's at least 80 years, less than the 400 or 430, depending on what number you use, before they get out of Egypt. So if you think about that, you know, you you might think, well, but Joseph did so much. Well, 300 years ago, let's just take the Revolutionary War, even though it wasn't quite 300 years. We might revere George Washington, even have statues about him and stuff. And But we're not really doing anything for his relatives. Do we even really care about his relatives or anything? <laughs> so you can kind of see how Joseph's relatives, which is basically all the Israelites, you know, they're not really thought of highly anymore. It's been 300 years. The famine's long gone. Yeah. All the good he's did, he did was pretty much forgotten. Yeah. I mean, people might know him and remember him, but nobody's thinking about his uh, 300 years, what, great, 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 great grandkids. I don't know. Yeah, but nope. That's right. So they oppressed him, made him slaves. That's right. And because Pharaoh, the Egyptian government, who was basically Pharaoh, wanted to control the population of Israel. So there was a lot of them and he wanted authority. To them. Yeah, he was worried about their numbers. Yeah. He was he w- afraid they would join up with, you know, another group that wanted to do away with the Egyptians and that they would just eventually take over. Numbers were bothering him. Without a doubt. And he decides to kill all the baby boys, the Jewish baby boys, and let the girls live. And I mean, if you think about that, girls weren't the fighters. Girls weren't going to rise up and rebel. And the girls were useful as slaves and probably mistresses. Mm -hmm. Now, Rose, I had an interesting thought, you know, thinking about Satan trying to get rid of all of the people that could possibly bear the Messiah. So he wants to get rid of people. And I was thinking, Pharaoh wants to get rid of the males. Not only could there be potential soldiers against Egypt, like he mentions, but, you know, if only the women are left, then he could make, Pharaoh could make a race of Egyptian Israelites. And they're obviously blessed with having children. Maybe you thought, hey, you know, I'll start this mixed group of people. Maybe it was another Satan's attempt to get rid of the Messiah. 
Well, it certainly points towards another killing of baby boys that we see in the New Testament after Jesus was born. And -hmm. you're right. I think ultimately behind the plan is probably Satan trying to get rid of the messianic seed. Yeah. Yeah. I I never saw that before, but. That's a great observation. So what he does is obviously they didn't have hospitals or doctors. The midwives delivered the babies and it was the Jewish midwives, the Israelite midwives delivered the Jewish babies. So he told them, kill the boys and let the girls live. Well, they don't do it. They, they let them live. And when he asked them about it, or here's what they say in Exodus 1, 19 to 21, the midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. So Chris, the midwives lied and God Mm -hmm. blesses them for that. Yeah, because they lied with reason to protect lives. I mean, they didn't just lie to save their own skin or, you know, lie for some No, they knew they could die for- yeah, what they were I, absolutely good. That's a very good point. I'm always amazed at this because this is an unnamed Pharaoh here. And yet these two midwives names are put in the Bible. Yeah, I you know? think that's that's a great point. And I, I think it's important to say that, yes, lying is a sin, but lying to save someone's life is not a sin. We We talked about this in an episode of No Trash, Just Truth about... I think it was liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah, I think it was. And we said that if you're trying, you know, if you're hiding an abused wife in your home and the husband is knocking on the door asking if she's there to say, no, she's not, is not a sin. You're saving someone's life. So that's, yep, that's exactly right. So the, the midwives fear of God was greater than them worrying about lying because they knew that murdering the babies, murdering the godly line would be a sin. Yeah, exactly. And they probably knew that murdering anybody would be a sin. Right. So I just think that it's so neat that they had children of their own then. They were given yeah, families. I that he blessed neat. them. And I love verse 22. Uh, it says, Pharaoh then commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrew shall be cast into the Nile, but let every daughter live. So when the midwives don't cooperate, he tells the Egyptians, throw the baby boys into the Nile because we got to stop them from being able to rise up and rebel and get out of slavery. Well, guess what? A baby boy that was tossed into the Nile is the very one who grows up to lead the people out of Egypt. I know. And you know what's funny? His own daughter, Pharaoh's own daughter, thwarts his plans. She does the exact opposite. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I just, I love... When God uses the wicked's words or actions against them. And it's such a, yeah, great point. Yeah. You know, it's throw those babies in the Nile. Okay. Guess All what? Right. <laughs> All right. Yep. Because who's coming out? Yeah. And that's how, how Moses gets saved. Yeah. And yeah. to cross over in the no trash, just truth, because we're doing the book of first Corinthians and that. First Corinthians 1, 26 to 29, it says, God chose what was foolish in the world to shame the wise and chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. He chose what's low to, and despised in the world, even the things that are not, to bring nothing things that are so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And I, I just love that. He, he just uses the things of the wicked to shame them. Yep. I love it. It's, it's kind of like he has a sense of humor. Yeah, I I think, you know, dramatic irony. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Psalm 1 says the the wicked are like chaff. You know, they're blown away with the wind. Well, it starts off this chapter with that those who rose in Egypt didn't know Joseph. So it seemed like Joseph and his people were chaff. They were all blown and, and gone. But God was faithful to his people and he was faithful to Joseph. His leave didn't wither, as Psalm 1 goes on to say. The righteous leaves do not wither. And we still talk about Joseph, and we still read about him today, as we do with all of God's people that he used throughout Scripture and throughout history. We know names like 
John Calvin, Martin Luther, Charles Spurgeon, and so many others who are faithful, godly people. And even those that we don't know, God knows. But like you said, Chris, this Pharaoh here who was ruler of the whole world, we don't even know his name. No, Talk about being chaff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. So Whether, it's so evident. It is. It, like you said, it's irony, but it almost is God's got a sense of humor. And I yep. guess when you know everything and you control everything, you can you can play out your sense of humor pretty well. So that's probably a good place to end for today. Have a blessed morning, everyone.